Hello, my name is Dr. Andreas Lothario, a veterinary resident at The Ohio State University. Welcome to the first video of a series on ticks and tick-borne diseases created for livestock producers in Ohio. In this video, we'll talk about tick biology that can be of practical use and is relevant for people and animals in Ohio. Currently in Ohio, we have six tick species you should be aware of that are either established, such as the American dog tick on the left, or are expanding. As you can see for all the ticks, they have maps with arrows. Good example is the Gulf Coast tick. We can see from this map that this tick is expanding from the southwestern parts of the state. Each of these ticks prefers their own set of hosts, people, animals, or both, and can cause their own respective diseases. In the previous slide, you saw the hard body ticks that we are concerned with. Here, we'll talk about one important soft body tick called the spinous ear tick, which belongs to a separate group of ticks. The immature stages of the spinous ear tick are parasites and infest livestock, as we can see in the images on the right, where we can see multiple ticks infesting the ear canal of animals. The adults of this species are free living, so they are not considered to be parasites. This tick is present in Ohio and will typically infest the ear canals of cattle and horses. The ear tick is the only soft tick we'll discuss in this video. Now let's dig into the biology of hard ticks. Notice the picture on the bottom right that represents the black-legged or deer tick, which we'll use as a representative for hard ticks. Hard ticks have three life stages, which include the larva, nymph, and adult, male and female. The picture above compares these tick life stages to a person's finger. As you can see, they are very small. Each stage needs one blood meal to molt into the next stage. The blood feeding can take days, unlike mosquitoes. On the bottom left, there is a picture of a female tick that has changed sizes after engorging of blood for seven days. As you can see, there's a dramatic change in the appearance of the tick from day four to day seven. It's important to know that the longer ticks remain attached to feeding, the greater the risk of disease transmission to the animal or person. It's often thought that ticks end up on people's heads because it can fly or drop from trees. This is incorrect because ticks cannot fly or drop from trees. Most ticks will search for a host by climbing up on vegetation and waiting, as shown in these pictures. Ticks can climb undetected from lower to upper body sides without a person ever realizing because they just cannot feel them. The life cycle of hard ticks can take up to two to three years, meaning to go from egg to larva to nymph to adult. Ticks, particularly black-legged or deer ticks, will become active during warm winter days when temperature is above freezing. This means that people and animals can experience a tick bite throughout the year, even in winter. Larvae and nymphs typically feed on smaller animals, like small rodents, as seen here with this mouse, although there are exceptions. Adults, but also nymphs, typically feed on larger animals like deer, cattle, and dogs, but also people. Ticks generally get infected with pathogens like the Lyme disease bacteria when they are larvae or nymphs. This concludes this video on tick biology funded by USDA North Central IPM Center. Thank you for your attention.